police cars, ambulances, all flashing their lights. I heard a noise. There was a concern that there could be somebody loose in the area. It started to sink in, but not really. I honestly still can't believe it. I think one of the things about this story that makes it so compelling is up until the very end, the events that happened aren't that unusual. Everything is going according to plan. Mark is gearing up for his new job in the marketing department at the University of Delaware. Janir stayed back to lease our home, and so I moved ahead 45 days. In those first few days and weeks where Janir was still back in South Carolina, how would you describe life on the job with Meredith? It was jaw-dropping to see her command a room. She led a team overseeing the entire University of Delaware brand. She also taught classes. So you fit right in well with the curriculum. She had an impressive resume at the age of 32. She ran for state senate in Delaware. Today, I'm announcing my candidacy for the Delaware State Senate for District 8. And had been named to Delaware's 40 under 40 for Young Achievers. Meredith could always be found posting on social media with that big smile. Mark and Meredith immediately hit it off. He was just blinded by how engaging she was, how much they had in common. And eventually, finally, she said, after the first two weeks, she said, let's, let's have a drink. When you went for drinks with Meredith, you poured your heart out to her. I did. I don't know why but it was so easy to talk to her. I told her about having just lost my parents, both of my parents, because it just, just happened, and I had just lost my brother as well. Did you talk about your marriage? Not necessarily in a, in a negative way, but I told her about some of the things that had happened over the course of our marriage. Mark felt alive again, the way he had when he had first met Janair. And I didn't know what was happening, and I was confused by the feelings I was having, to be honest until I think it became just a little bit more forward with the dinner that we had. It was more of a date. There was a point after that where we shared a kiss. And it was surprising to me, I think it was surprising to her, but the, the energy was, it was there and I immediately felt awful. And I said, we can't do this. I can't do this to her. Meaning you couldn't do that to Janair. I couldn't do that to Janair. And whatever was happening, whatever was about to happen, it, was, it just wasn't gonna happen. I called it off. How many weeks into having met her did this happen? Four weeks. It was fast. It was very fast. Mark had applied for a job in Colorado before any of this had happened, and he gets an interview. So he decides he's going to go out and check it out anyway. And I was in the middle of the interview. Something inside me clicked and said, I don't want this job. There was something about not seeing through what Meredith and I had started professionally that I just, I couldn't give it up. Professionally? Both. And personally? From the airport in Denver, I texted her that I was all in. And how did you feel in that moment when you had made that decision? It's, it's hard to say how I felt. I felt enthralled. Such a connection to shut it down just didn't feel right. I had to at least find out what it was that drew us together so much. Mark and Meredith find themselves embarking on a whirlwind romance. Meredith was also married. What had Meredith told you about her marriage? She certainly wasn't happy. What she said, they've been married for nine years, and for the last three, um, it was more of a show. Did your relationship with Meredith reveal the problems in your marriage? Here comes Meredith, and she she's just telling me that I'm good at what I do. She said that I'm such a wonderful man. I had never heard this from Janair's lips, ever. Here's this woman who I think is amazing, saying that she thinks I'm a wonderful man. She'd only known you for a few weeks, though. Fair point. She'd only known me for a couple weeks. Meredith and Mark are just falling hopelessly in love. It's as if Mark is living in a parallel universe, unmarried, free to explore this new romance. It's like he doesn't even have a wife. Do you remember 
when you first told Meredith that you loved her? I, when I first told Meredith, it was one of those things that it bottles up inside of you and you can't not say it. I couldn't not say it and I told her, I love you. And she returned and it was... She said, I love you too. She did, it was... Um, How do you explain that one month after meeting her? I can't explain it. I can't explain it, I don't know. It's, it's in, in, in the moment it felt right. Looking back at it, it seems silly. When I say I love with her, I was, I was in love with her, right? I couldn't love her in the way I love, loved my wife for 24 years. It was, it was a powerful feeling. It was a very powerful feeling, and I was overwhelmed by it all. Did I still love my wife? Yes. I didn't know what to do with the feelings I was feeling. They were new, unexpected. At the same time, they were, it was addictive as well. Some people might say what you're describing is a midlife crisis. If you unpack it, what a midlife crisis is, I, I wouldn't disagree with you. I was 49 at the time. You wonder, is this all there is? What is the rest of my life gonna be like? And we'd gotten into a pattern that was over and over again, the same thing. And when I got to see that life can be different, that there's something else, I, I questioned everything. So I look back at the last 24 years and I wondered, are we about to repeat those 24 years again or is there something else? As the relationship with Mark and Meredith intensifies, Janair is packing up and getting ready to move to Delaware. And that inevitable collision is on the horizon. 